Uh, something interesting happened. Uh, I saw some poop and I was like, that, uh, we don't have any animals in this pasture. Come on, buddy. Hey guys, Dusty Baker at Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for watching us. We're raising the American Bison, the coolest animal in North America. These are uh, my yearlings. I've had them in this uh, trap. So here's our front entry. Here's uh, the red barn. I've got some bisqueen out here. Just ignore all that. Some greenhouse possibly stuff going up in the future who knows uh but i got it and then all these yearlings they unraveled it and rolled it out everywhere so that's why all that plastic scattered out there's marissa's flowers up here in the front so i've had them in here this grass was growing up and so it was good grass and so i've locked them in here and uh, that's why i've been watering so much uh with this heat um because they i've took them out of their pen down here or this pasture pasture one paddock one whatever you want to call it uh, i've locked them out of there give this a little break now i'm gonna let them back out of here and let them back in their pasture basically i forced them to kind of graze this down some because i let it grow up anyway so that's what i'm gonna do and uh, uh something interesting happened uh with uh, marissa and i hope oh, here comes hoss so uh, something interesting happened. I say with Marissa and me and Brooks, basically I'm scooting a little closer to my truck. I trust Haas. He's a young guy, but anyways, uh, he's ready to go out. He knows I'm going to open up the gate right here. Um, look at him. He's like, let's open up the gate. He's like, let's go. Let's go. Uh, what I did, what, what we did is we, we took a little cruise to the pasture and the, and the, and the ranger and, um, I saw some poop. Uh, I saw some, I know this is interesting. I saw some poop and I was like, that, uh, we don't have any animals in this pasture. And it was a, it was a different type of poop. And, and uh, when you see this type of uh, poop, you're like, hey, I know exactly what that is because it looks so different than a cattle or bison poop. So uh, just take a look here and I'll show you uh, what was in our pasture. And I've, I've got some explaining to do. What are you doing? <laughs> Maya's like, I'm out. Yeah. Me. 
gosh, that looked... <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> it's like she's just gonna like, latch onto my leg. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? You can go out. Headed straight for the pond. <laughs> so what we did was when we pulled through there, uh, we, we saw the... Uh, the horse manure, and uh, I said, well, golly, we've got horses on the place. We've been talking about horses a lot lately, and it just keeps popping up so somehow. But what happened is uh, we drove maybe 100 yards, and there they were. <laughs> and so basically, these horses, we're tearing fence down. And um, where we're tearing fence down is part of this Project 189. We're repairing all this fence and putting new fence in to, to move the bison talk to you about that what had happened is i didn't know it but the 40 acres next to me that i'm tied up to my neighbor he is uh leasing his land out to uh, some uh, people that have two horses and uh because i tore the fence they showed up on our property um i'll take it uh, two horses is better than uh you know uh, uh 16 17 cattle which i've had problems with before when i first moved in to the Ponderosa. So anyways, I called uh, my aunt and uncle who just live, their, their property tags up next to our property and they know the people with the horse. I said, hey, I think uh, the neighbor's horses are out here. So Keith and Janie showed up. Brooks and Marissa and I in the meantime hung out with the horses and they were super friendly and whatnot and pretty and, and uh, Brooks loved that of course. Uh, but what we did was uh, when She'll Keith and Janie showed up, uh, we took our, used our ATVs and we just kind of walked them slowly up to uh, the neighbor's pasture where they came from she and did. put them in there.
uh, we may see more of those horses because I told the lady, I said, well, I've got fence down right now. Um, but you know, and it'll probably be down for the next month or two. So I said, if they show up at the Ponderosa again, that's okay. I can't get in with the bison. That's not a problem. And two horses is not hurting anything. Like I said, if it was a bunch of cattle, that's a different deal because we'll eventually get back there, uh, with the bison once we get some of this fence work done. So, uh, it was a fun time uh, to see the horses out there. And I know I've been talking about uh, possibly getting a horse and, and whatnot out here, but um, it's still a subject. And then, we drive, and then we drive out there on the ATV and guess what we see? Two horses on the Ponderosa. So uh, Brooks liked it and uh, it was fun. But anyways, we, we got them taken care of and got them back to where they came from. So I may drive down here and look and see them. And uh, that we took them eventually through the hay pasture which i hadn't talked to you much about the hay pasture and i hadn't showed you the hay pasture so let's go take a look at the hay pasture uh, because it's going to get cut very very soon and i'll show you guys what it looks like over there well hey guys welcome to the hill this is like the tallest point on the property and this is this is my favorite spot um you can see the arbuckle mountains one of the highest points in the mountains right back here behind me uh, you can see my neighbor's land down here this is ours right here and it kind of cuts back a little bit but uh he's got some cattle and whatnot and then uh, some of our land goes back this way and uh my aunt and uncle live right over here the ones i was talking about where we took the horses back to um, right in that area. So you can see some uh, dead cedar right in here, right here, some dead trees that I cleaned up out of these kind of islands. And uh, this is our hay pasture. This, uh, we cut it last year. I made a deal with the owner before we even bought the place to cut the hay off of it. And uh, we built it last year. Richard, the guy who uh, builds our fence for us, also cuts the hay, which is super, super convenient because he lives just right here. Um, and you hear me talk about him quite a bit, but he also bales our hay. And so last year he would bale uh, hay off this for the first time in I don't know how long. And so I think we end up getting about uh, 27 or so bales, which uh, isn't bad. This year it should do much better uh, because it needed that cut for the first time in many, many years. There has been no uh, cattle on this since April of 21, which is a really good thing. So, um, excited to get another cut on this however last summer was very dry and we're still paying uh, for that today um, because this sh this is a lot of native grass as you can see it's beautiful i love it up here good ground one of the best places on the property obviously we're going to use it for hay eventually someday uh, we'll we'll still use it for hay but also a good place to have the bison and i just can't wait for the sunsets to hit and the bison be up here. It's gonna be a beautiful spot. It is a beautiful spot, very lucky. And this is one of those places that it just makes you stop and think um, how blessed we are uh, for Marissa and Brooks and I to have a, a property like this. And uh, this spot is that place. And uh, you can actually see the red barn from here, almost the red barn from here uh, because it's, it's a high point. So anyways, we had a fun time wrangling the horses up i say wrangling it was pretty easy they were very gentle horses and we got them back to the owner so uh hope you guys enjoyed that and uh just uh project 189 is about to get going again with fence building and uh trying to keep an eye on the bison making sure that the ponds are good and the calves are good dealing with this heat we're in the 100s now and uh we just hope for a little bit more rain and uh well, I'll let you know when we get this cut. I'll keep you updated and we'll shoot the drone over and uh, we'll let you know how many bales of hay we get off of this um, spot right here. And uh, we'll keep you updated with everything. Something I did want to talk about uh, real quick. Thank you for the feedback on Big Joe. Um, it is uh, something to worry about. It is something to look at. But I think the number one thing is we got to get him checked. Um, I still got to get a hold of Doc Parsons and check with him to see, but I think we're going to have to get a fertility test on him. And a lot of you recommended, and just like cattle people, you test your bulls every year before you let them out. Uh, and, and that's probably true. I, I, I agree with you on that. Um, in the past, we haven't had this issue. And bison, 
it happens just like just like cattle uh but not only having two bulls and and their past it's not something that we were tr that we needed to do we felt like we needed to do but obviously we've ran into a curve in the road and now it's something that we have to deal with and this is just a learning uh curve and i know a lot of people don't check their herd bulls everywhere i've been and work bison uh, they don't check their bulls before they let them out a lot of them are, are with their cows year-round and uh um I, they just uh, they do i knew some people that i know some people that do check their bulls and and most of the time it's two-year-old bulls before they let them out for the first time um, and then that they don't check them again until they have a problem big joe was seven and dunbar is five so they're still relatively uh, young bulls uh, if Big Joe is a little bit older, I would be concerned um, just about him being lazy and whatnot, but he's not. I've watched him uh, chase cows around that are in heat. So, uh, And he did it last summer, too. And, and a lot of you said it could have been the heat. We had a very, very dry summer last year, and it was very hot as well. We're running the same thing again. So three babies from uh, the Dunbar herd uh, over there at Mom and Kevin's got bred because we got three babies over there. And so uh, we won't know whose they are until we do the um, hair sample. So uh, thank you guys for the feedback. It is something, a concern that we have to look at. And uh, again, I think we're going to have to do a fertility test. And uh, right now uh, it's going to be hard to do because I don't have a working system here at the Ponderosa yet. And um, I think we're just going to keep having Doc bring his down in the fall and spring for now until we get some. So uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.